So uh, another mega church pastor falls from grace, if you ever knew the grace of God. Uh, Bruxy Cavey, the pastor, or Cavey, spelled C-A-V-E-Y, Bruxy is his first name, pastor of the largest mega church in Canada. Uh, I think it's called the Meeting House. Uh, he was supposed to be like the uh, anti-mega church pastor, mega church pastor. Like if you see most mega church pastors, they got their $20,000 hair doing their fancy clothes. And this guy looks like a hippie out of the 60s, real long hair, unshaven, sloppy looking guy with a flannel shirt, you know. And, uh, you know, he bragged he got a tattoo of Leviticus where, it, you know, God forbids tattoos, you know, if you want, you know. So anyway, this guy was pretty popular and uh, he resigned. And he said soon as he was accused, he confessed, like just, you know, trying to sound noble. I confess to this extra marital affair. But the girl came out that he had the affair with. And he said, no, this, this was not an affair. I was an emotional mess. I was 26 years old. I went to the pastor for counseling and he abused me. He was 46. The guy was 20 years older, old enough to be his, her dad. Uh, she went to him for spiritual counseling and he sexually abused her. And she said she was manipulated and was in this relationship for 10 years until just like recently. And the guy's like my age now, 56, 57. And uh, he didn't confess till he got caught, you know? So, um, you know, I Google this guy and of course, like every other mega church pastor, even though he's dressed as like a hippie bum, he said his income was like $8,000 per week. <laughs> he's, he's worth over a million dollars. Uh, you know, contrast that with our priest that would make about $800 a week. Just, just as a, you know, frame of reference of how much money these mega pastors make. So... I see it can go several ways from here. It could go, it's not going to go the way Greg Locke, when Greg Locke got caught cheating on his wife, he said he loved the woman, you know, even though the woman was married, they both got divorced and got married and Greg Locke went on and his net worth rose from 1 million to like 5 million now. Everybody forgave him, you know, he's like, hey, you know, we all make mistakes, we all sin, but God forgives us, you know. It could go that way, or it could go away of, um, Tertullian Tachitavin, uh, one of Billy Graham's grandson. I'm going to talk about another one of Billy Graham's grandson. Uh, but uh, Billy Graham's grandson, he go, his nickname is like uh, Tullian, short for Tertullian. He was named after, you know, Tertullian, that early Christian. Um, it could go his way. He got caught in an affair. He cheated on his wife with a woman who was cheating on her husband, and the, the church fired him. And then he went to another church. He was divorced at this point, but he had an affair with another married woman. <laughs> and then that church fired him. And now I, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, he started his own church in Florida. Uh, last I heard. So it could go that way. Or it could go the way of Carl Lentz, the mega church pastor in Hillsong, who had that affair with the Muslim girl who came out and uh, uh, exposed him publicly on Instagram. And he just, he was, he was fired and you haven't heard nothing from him. Apparently, you know, Lord willing, I'm praying for him, uh, that he really did repent. He said he, uh, you know, he sounded like he had a true repentance. I don't know. And he's trying to repair his marriage and he just kind of, I haven't heard anything from him since. So it could go that way. That would be, you know, probably the best. So we don't know how this is going to go. And whenever I talk about, uh, these mega church pastors, you know, people say, oh, you know, I get two responses, you know, from my Protestant uh, brothers and sisters. Oh, you, oh, it seems like you, you enjoy watching these guys fall from grace. No, I don't. But I know these guys are wolves in sheep's clothing, and I love my evangelical brothers, and I want to warn them to watch out for these guys. You know, I was an evangelical for 30 years, and I can't think of one pastor that I had that would I would even think would do this. I had godly men as pastors, as evangelicals, and most evangelical pastors are good men. But when you see these guys <laughs> driving these fancy cars, making eight thousand dollars a week, you gotta pause for a second and say, "Are they in this for the sheep, or are they in this for themselves?" Seriously, there's nothing wrong with making money, but making money off the gospel—it's a different story. Now, the second response is like, "Oh, you need to take the log out of your own eye, brother." 
And Lent, that's that was, I, I believe that was one of the first readings of the seasons of Lent, where Jesus told uh, the Pharisees to take the log out of their own eye before they take the speck out of their brother's eyes. And that's what we do in Lent. Every day, every morning we wake up, we're supposed to examine ourselves. And if there's unconfessed mortal sins, we need to get to confession. You know, and every time we take the Eucharist, we need to examine ourselves and make sure not only have we not sinned, but have we done the things we've been called to do? You know, sins of omission, sins of uh, commission that you commit, and there's sins of omission that you omit, and things you were supposed to do and we don't do. You know, like love your wife the way Christ loves the church, love your neighbor as yourself. These are pretty clear commands from the Lord himself. So, um, so, you get this, oh, you know, take the log of your own eyes. Look at the clergy sex abuse in your church. And, you know, I always have the same response. Yeah, we had some demonic priests that did some really nasty things. But you got to look at the facts and the evidence. You know, there's sinful men in every profession. There's pedophile lawyers. There's pedophile doctors, teachers. And if you look at the facts and... You know, you stop listening to the liberal media that hates the Catholic Church and just look at the facts. You will see the facts. According to Tertullian and Tegidovin's brother, remember I, I mentioned that pastor who's Billy Graham's grandson in those fair affairs? Well, his brother is a very, very devout Christian who um, was actually a state prosecutor in the state of Florida where I'm at. And then he opened up a law firm where he specialized in clergy abuse. His name is Boz Tijitovin. And uh, Billy Graham's grandson, Boz Tijitovin, said this. He said publicly on more than one occasion within Protestant evangelical churches, child sex abuse is two to three times more rampant than the Catholic Church. And now before all my liberal atheist uh, friends, and I have some that watch this, start saying, yeah, all you Christians are messed up. According to Dr. Cheryl Shakeshaft, who did a thorough investigation for the United States Department of Education, her report, she stated that the child sex abuse in the United States public schools is a hundred times worse than the Catholic Church has ever been. And she said ever been because she actually gave a statistic that from 1950 to 1980, this is when all these, you know, they keep talking about all these uh, child sex abuse cases. And uh, talk about all these child sex abuse cases. And um, they always talk about the same ones from the 1950s and 1980s. And uh, there was uh, a little over 10,000, which is horrible. It's, it's embarrassing. It's disgusting. And every priest that committed this sin should spend the rest of their life in jail and the rest of eternity in hell. And every bishop that covered for him should have the same fate. But according to Dr. Shakeshaft, uh, United States public school system from 1990 to 2000 had 280,000 child sex abuse cases. Way worse. Way worse. <laughs> so it's nothing left of it. I'm just saying you never hear about it because the liberal media loves their teachers union. And it's kind of interesting that the same, the same uh, liberals that hate the Catholic Church are mad at our governor, Ron DeSantis, because he just made a law saying we can't te teach sex education to five-year-olds. You can't teach se uh, about um, sexual orientation to five-year-olds. What adult would want to, unless there was something wrong there, you know? You know, think about that for a second. But it's not surprising that the world hates the church. The devil hates the Catholic church. The same reason satanic satanists have had black masses over the centuries because they know the catholic church is the true church they don't attack baptist church and pentecostal churches 
that don't believe the Eucharist is the body and blood of Jesus. Jesus said, this is my body. And the Catholic Church, the ancient church has believed it from the very beginning. So the black mass takes that Eucharist and does horrible things to it because they know the Eucharist is real. They don't, what are they going to do with a, uh, an evangelical service? <laughs> have a, have, a, have bad music and a bad motivational speech. That's how they would, you know, cause the devil always copies and then turns it upside down. You know, that's why, you know, there's demonic tongues because he knows that the Holy ghost tongues are real. So he copies everything that Jesus has created. So, you know, you're in the true church when it's being attacked by the world and the devil. So God bless, stay Catholic. I think that was my boss calling me on my work phone. See ya.